is a place of testing, actually, the very foundation of grace as Paul written to the Galatian church with regard to the liberty of Christ through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Judaizers were doing their best to keep them under the bondage of the law. And of course, under the bondage of the law, the free spirit of the charismata or the grace of God would be restricted and held to man's ability to operate and function within his own strength. And what God is saying is that there's a liberty that comes with grace that you could never find with law. I, I always like the comparisons between law and grace because under law comes work and wages, under grace comes faith and promise. Law works, wages, grace, faith, and promise. And it's always infinitely more powerful to live with a promise from God than to try to work to merit anything from God. Because no man can work hard enough to merit the great promises that God has given. So it's better to believe God and trust God for what he has promised than to try to work your way into his graces. Because I heard him say that uh, your righteousness is as filthy rags. In other words, man cannot do enough to merit what God has for him. So it's just good to believe God, oh yes, for the promises that he has given and trust him to bring it to pass. Well, the Galatians were challenged because on the one hand, there was Paul promulgating and seeking to perpetuate through word the grace, the promise and faith that comes with God. And then of course the Judaizers were trying to turn the people back to the system of the Torah, of the law. And it is here in testing that some of the greatest doctrinal positions are established. And in establishing the power of grace, he now deals with what Jesus did when God brought him into the world to settle some things once and for all. And in verse 3, he says, even so we, when we were children in bondage under the elements of the world. And he's talking now about being held without receiving your inheritance because you are a child and you're a child being held under the law. And so now he says, but even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, wherefore thou art no more a servant but a son. And if a son than an heir of God through Christ. I want you to look at somebody and tell them the victory is already done. Amen. Look at your neighbor on the other side and tell them the battle is over. Tell somebody the game is over. Amen. Uh, now for those of you who play chess, it's just mate in whatever move you want. <laughs> but you already made it. It's just a matter of time. The game is over. You might as well get up, go find something else to do, because you lost this one. Amen. That's I got word for the devil. You lost this one. Amen. You lost this. It's difficult. It's very difficult to, to look at Easter 
And as I was traveling this week, I had a lot of time to think, uh, particularly of the splendor of Good Friday and <clears throat> uh, the issues surrounding the suffering in Gethsemane, the death burial of Jesus Christ, uh, as it moved into Sunday and giving great consideration to his passion with communion and of course resurrection on Easter and somehow not seek to put the event in what I might call an eschatological landscape. And when you hear the word eschatology, you don't get uh, miffed by it, you don't get, it really deals with last day doctrines, eschatology, the eschaton, last days. And we are particularly concerned because when we look at the passion and we look at the death burial, of, death burial and resurrection of Jesus, excuse me, particularly when we have come through the historical commemorative time of Easter, there is no way we can avoid asking how does that relate to the contemporary situation that we are in as we bring an historical event into the present and we commemorate and memorialize the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we wonder how is it relevant and significant to an eschatological circumstance or situation? How do I take history and bring it into the present and find revelation in the present that is going to influence the way I think? and cause me to handle my life in a better way than I'm handling it today simply by bringing the historical Christ into my present day environment. So that was the challenge as I skirted through the country and around into the Caribbean and that was how do I make a bridge between the historicity of the Christ event and the present day situation that is very scary and frightening to the individual who's living in a time where AIDS is running two thirds of Africa, where Iraq and Islamic forces are trying to make us uncomfortable. And when life and death is flashing in front of us, the question now becomes, where is the practicality of the memorialization of the Christ event and how does it affect my thinking in an eschatological landscape? How do I deal with history revelation in a way that will transform me who is regarded as end time? I want to take a little time to talk about this because uh, many of us have a prevalence of fear. It is just fear of what we do and oftentimes when you deal with fear it brings about uh, an apathy an apathetic disposition anytime you have hopelessness and hopelessness in an eschatological environment is oftentimes born out of the fact that whatever I do is meaningless anyway I don't know if have you ever been there uh, if you're sick and you know you know you're dying soon, it, it don't make sense doing a whole lot of stuff because whatever I do, I ain't gonna be around here to enjoy it anyway. And so the feeling is one of apathy, and that is, uh, I don't know when they're gonna blow something up, and we're living in a time when anything can happen. And so the question is, how do I become transformed? How? Do I have the right disposition? How do I keep serving and praising God? When I look at present day world events, how am I positioned? And 
why should I look, what should I look for? Especially when my brothers and sisters in the Christendom are looking for signs. And if you turn the TV on, you've got all these last day experts talking about what China's going to do and what everybody else is going to do. How do I see Jesus in all of this? Where do I place my salvation and how do I enjoy my Savior? That's the battle I had as I was thinking about the wonders of Easter. Uh, I want to note with you that the New Testament message is that Jesus is the final revelation of the divine nature. And that means then that he is literally the last word of God. When we talk about the last word, then he has to be viewed automatically in history as the last word. And not only the last word of God, but he has to be the demarcation between history and revelation. It all has to meet in Christ Jesus, which means that time then, as Mark put it in chapter 1, verse 15 of Mark, he said that time is fulfilled in Jesus. Everybody was looking for him to come. Even wicked Herod was wondering when he was going to show up. And Simeon in the temple gave God great praise because he lived long enough to see Jesus and Jesus then becomes the last word in history he is the time is fulfilled in Jesus which makes him then the, the supreme disclosure of God that's what he is he becomes that ex supreme disclosure of God's nature and and that cannot happen at any time just can't come upon us. Uh, ooh, I feel it. It just can't happen without being orchestrated, without being controlled, without being manipulated by God himself. You don't get revelation by happenstance. If God does not open you up to himself, you will never get a glimpse of who he is. Uh, I want you to stay with me. This is my challenge today to keep you with me. It is critical here, as the Hebrew writer says, now once at the end of the age, he has been manifested. The coming of our Lord Jesus Christ does not only have historical ramifications for us, but it also has revelatory revelations. And with revelations, now we have an eschatology in making. It is Jesus of yesterday that opens my eyes to the circumstances of today that gives me some serenity and tranquility to whatever will happen tomorrow. I have to feel within myself a comfort zone, the fact that I am in Jesus that will give me the relaxation to enjoy my life no matter what time is on the clock. I have to be able to enjoy my life at 20 as I do at 90 because the time on the clock has to become minuscule as it relates to my position in Christ Jesus. Uh, uh, we heavy now. We going heavy and we going to dip. But we coming back out. The supreme disclosure. God's nature cannot come at any time. That's why he says when the fullness of time had come. If God didn't catch you at the right time. You wouldn't be saved right now. If God didn't manipulate your history. He couldn't have brought you to revelation. It's somehow you think that God just got in touch with you when you met him. Wrong. He was always there messing with your uh, relationships and wheeling and dealing in your circumstances. He was always staring you to that meeting with him. Uh, it couldn't have happened at any time. 
because there were times when you felt you didn't need God. There were times when you felt you could make it by yourself. There were times when you liked yourself enough not to even think about going to church. But some circumstances took place in your life. He made a move here. He made a move there. And it forced you to move there. And then he made another move. And it forced you to put somebody out. And it forced you to bring somebody in. And it was not just about you doing your thing. It was God doing his thing to get you to where he wanted you to be. And, uh, uh, this disclosure of God's nature cannot come at any time. It's got to come at the time appointed by God. Thank you, sound man. I'm happy. Uh, J.A.T. Robinson, the then Bishop of Wallick, Walwick rather, Woolwick, I'm sorry. He puts it this way. He says, it cannot come as a pagan theophany might against the back cloth of history which has nothing to do with it and which it leaves unaffected for the God of the incarnate is the God of history unquote uh, there's absolutely no way that he can come at a time orchestrated by him and come into a life that is needed by him into a world that cannot do without him and not effectively make a change anytime something happens at the right time it moves you to the right level oh, I wish I could talk about it uh, you know many times I look at my own life and some things I have the capacity to do now had I had the capacity earlier I would have shipwrecked it I wouldn't have not I would have had the right skill but at the wrong time I, I hope you're with me sometimes you look at what you can afford and uh, and what you just won't buy because you're mature enough to know it really doesn't matter now I hope you're with me but had I had the same money at another time I would have done something foolish with it uh, it, it's good to have the right skill at the right time. It's, it's good to have your character developed when your gift is released. Uh, it's not good to have your gift running too far ahead of your character because your character would destroy the gift. All investors know that buying a particular stock is a good thing to buy, but you got to buy it at the right time. The real estate person will tell you, I'm looking at some stuff in San Felipe because it don't make sense going to Cabo. And the reason is Cabo's already out of the station. So uh, the amount of money you put in Cabo, you put in San Felipe, if you wait a few years, it'll be where it should be. You want to put your money in at the right time are uh, you hearing me it's not just good to have the money it's where you put it and timing is important God uh, waited till the fullness of time and then he brought forth his son born made of a woman made under the law because he was getting ready to change some stuff uh, when God gets ready to change some stuff in your life he knows what time to come to you huh? Oh, he knows what time to get your attention and he knows what time to get your heart uh, and the phrase here the fullness of the times the words of the times are in the construction called the genitive objective and and the word now times receives the action of the noun of the action it is the fullness of time had come gone 
God. And so times is associated now with God. It is God who is dealing with the times. The times aren't running themselves. You know, uh, how can I put it? The individual says, uh, you know, your heart got broken and the man left you, the woman left you and tore you to pieces and somebody pat you on the back trying to comfort you, you know, and they don't know what to say. So they say, you know, in time you're going to be all right you know it's going to be all right after a while you're going to get over it uh, they're not suggesting that time is going to do anything because time in this context chronos is just going to pass it's just going to pass that means i got hurt at six o'clock it's now uh, three months later and I still have the pain and the time is passing. And, but time doesn't come and soothe you. Time doesn't wipe the brow and hold you. Time just passes, which means you can be hurt six months ago and still be hurt today because time didn't step up and comfort you. Uh, but what they're saying is that in time, while time is passing, there is going to be an event in time that's going to make you feel better. When I tell you time, things are going to be healed. It's prophetic because what I'm telling you is somebody's going to come up in your life that's going to replace who left and it's going to take time for them to get there but it'd be all right it ain't time that's going to make it better it's going to make whoever comes up in there is going to make it better just give me a little time i'll fix it baby but i just need some time to handle it because time is doing nothing of itself that's for us so chronos here is the word for time it's not kairos and it's and chronos is a succession of moments it's a lapse of time as opposed to a critical epoch making period that is foreordained by god that is now a kairos we've got two chronos comes from this word chronograph comes from chronos this watch does not make me happy uh, well, you know, it, it gives a sense of dignity depending on what it is. But uh, other than what it is, a name brand, it don't make anybody happy. What I bought this for was to tell time because the time is passing and it's so this is a chronograph from the Greek word chronos which means this does not put food on my table this does not uh, put money in my pocket it, it costs money it didn't put none in my pocket and what I do is I look at it to tell what time it is and the seconds keep ticking uh, this watch does not bring a woman in my life neither does it take one out it just tells me the time now I can tell you what time she left but uh, the, the, the time didn't put her out of my life it just passes now Kairos is a little different because Kairos says that March 21st the season changes that's what it says and it's an epoch it's a period that is controlled by God that moves me out of one season into a next this word the fullness of times is not dealing with kairos but it is dealing with chronos and that is when the succession of time came to a point then god brought his son at the right time uh, uh, we'll debate it further but we're gonna uh, we, we're gonna go with it for a minute uh, Vincent states it this way and I quote he says the meaning is that when that moment came which completed the period of time designated by God then he sent forth his son so God had selected a time and he let the clock run until that time came when the time came he released his son 
Now, I don't take much uh, argument with the etymologists, uh, but uh, I'm going to take some argument here. <laughs> Early in my life, I would have agreed completely with Vincent. Uh, but now I see things a little bit differently. And the reason is that all expressions relating to any end, that is controlled by God has latent ambiguity <laughs> because when I start dealing with time and the passing of time and when I start dealing with time from a seasonal point of view I, I, I'm seeing if we start dealing with final and ultimate we're going to have a little discussion here <laughs> anytime you see the terms final and ultimate Ultimate, you're going to see a double reference on the one hand what I've got is temporal posterity on the one hand and when you look at post means after and the general meaning of posterity is the those who follow us and those who come and go on when we are scheduled to stop what you find now then is when you talk about the final you're talking about the last is that which in a time sequence comes after everything else uh, I bought many cars and I built many houses but this is my last house which means that it has a place among all the houses I have built and this one is the last one so the concluding moment now comes after it is impossible for anything to occur or to continue when I tell you this is my last house you don't expect me to go out and build another this is the last I thought you said that was the last if it's the last it is the final house I've had many more if you said last I will assume you have built some others and this is the last one so now the position and the moment of the end is here defined and determined entirely by its place my mother has seven children of which Randolph is the last it's not that she couldn't have any more it's just that Randy is the last one they had you had Chris and you had Noel you had Grace you had Max Pamela Janet now you got Randy and he's the last he's the last simply because of his position he he doesn't have to be the greatest he doesn't have to be the best but he is the last the terms then relating to the end stand now for finality uh-huh but now we got to take it further here's where I'm arguing you see God is not only dealing with last in terms of quantitative you had one two three four five six seven and the seventh is the last that's quantity but when Jesus becomes the fullness when the fullness of time comes and he presents Jesus he does not only present the final word in Revelation but he presents the best that he could ever have uh, I want to talk to you a minute about that in practical terms so I've had a Pinto I've had um, I've had uh, a Chevy I've had uh, I've had a Pontiac I've had I've, I've had a Mercedes Benz but now the last car is a Bentley. I got a Bentley. No, uh, the last car, let me go a little bit further, uh, uh, is a 612. And maybe, uh, maybe I ought to just go on and get that uh, a Bugatti. And uh, so the last I have now is a Bugatti. That's my last. I bought quantitatively six cars but now I bought a seventh one and it's a Bugatti uh, 
and I ain't buying no more. So what I've done now is I'm saying to you, I've got the last car, but the last car is the best one. I just spent 1.8 million for a car. So now I've got the last car, but the last is the best. So now what I've done is I put Kairos and I put Kronos together. Not only is it a succession of time, but it's God operating at the right time. But not only did he operate at the right time, he gave you the best at the right time. Oh, I feel like preaching in here. Ah, I'm talking to you chess players now. I'm going to make the best move at the right time. And the move I make right now, even though it's in the middle of the game, is going to determine the outcome of the game. Ah, uh, so really the game is already over. Uh, I wish I could talk to somebody understanding what I'm saying. A whole lot of folk out here looking for signs uh, to see how they ought to position themselves in the end time. Uh, but I got news for you. Uh, about 2,000 years ago when he rose from the dead, uh, the game was already over. Uh, Oh, I feel, wake up Patrick, I feel like we're going to have some church. Uh, one writer says the point of reference is fulfillment of purpose uh, rather than temporal posterity, unquote. Uh, it ain't just about timing up in here, it's about purpose in the middle of time. So the position and the moment of the end is defined and determined, not temporarily, but by reference to a state of achievement. Uh, I'm graduating today, please. But the graduation today ain't got nothing to do with me graduating. I spent four years in university, but a whole lot of folk went there for four years and didn't graduate because the time didn't make them smart the time just passed but in the four years I achieved the grade to graduate so I just wasn't passing time I was taking care of purpose what God says is when I get ready to touch you in time I'll touch you with destiny so time didn't just pass but I locked up some things so I can look the devil in the face and tell him the victory is already won oh I feel like preaching to somebody have I told you touch your neighbor yet uh, we gonna get it after a while just hang on it's true now that it's the state of achievement and that is that God is not just moving your life without direction and letting time act as if it's arbitrary as if it's abstract from the move of God because the times are controlled by God it is the psalmist that said he is Lord of the times he moves in time but is not affected by time because he's eternal and he established this ephemeral and he is still God all by himself what he's saying when the fullness of time had come the purpose has been achieved oh I feel something pushing me here it's about purpose that's why he told you you ain't got to wait till the battle's over yeah you can shout now because it's already done uh, oh can i preach like i feel it uh the end then is that after which nothing further can happen not because it is physically impossible for duration to continue but because there is nothing more to happen after jesus who else is there after jesus who else can move you after jesus who else can send chill bumps up your arms anything further would not only not add anything but like the 13th stroke of a clock 
talk it would render meaningless everything that happened before when you're moving into anticlimactic living what you're saying is the best has already passed I feel like preaching this thing and everything else is anticlimactic I met a man the other day he said I'll never marry again he's about 80 something years old uh, 80 ain't got nothing to do with it it's just he's 80 years old he said he won't marry again I said why he said because the woman I've had for 40 something years is the best thing I could have anyway so ain't no sense of me living in an anticlimactic environment I've already had the best there is can't nothing else top it I might as well be by myself so I can remember it because ain't nothing else coming that that's bad. I hope those of you that are single, that your best years ain't behind you. I hope you got something coming. Uh, forget my history, I got revelation. Uh, just throw that in, that won't cost you nothing. Uh, it's important to understand that when Jesus came, the purpose is achieved. Uh, and the temporal moment, Kronos, is entirely subordinate to the moral. That's what I want to tell Vincent, that the Kronos is now subordinate to the Kairos. It is not that it doesn't have its place, it's got its place. But don't forget, it is not just the time was so right, but what God is presenting is so wonderful. Because we're not dealing only with quantity, we're dealing now with quality. Jesus is the last word but Jesus is the best word at the same time and so qualitatively considered the fulfillment will express itself outwardly as the last point in a temporal succession but that which determines the end and that which determines the date at which it occurs is a moral moment it is a moment of the power of God I control your uprising and your down I control your thoughts and I see your thoughts from afar off which means time don't mean anything when God's getting ready to move if you got a problem with that ask Caleb he said I'm just as strong today as I was 40 years ago because the God I serve moves in me I feel something pushing me touch your neighbor and say it is not as much about when it is not when tell somebody it's not when but it's what it ain't when he's doing it is what he is doing because when he does the what he can redeem the time I'd give you as much pleasure at 65 as you had at 25 because time don't mean anything to God uh, so Kairos then is considered in relation to personal action determined by reference to ends achieved in it whereas Kronos by the Greeks is time extra Attracted from the relation as it were that ticks on objectively and impersonally whether anything is happening or not when you talk about chronos you talk about momentary when you talk about kairos you talk about momentous I've had a lot of momentary but I'd rather have momentous I don't want to go out with anybody anymore and it just be momentary uh, if I meet the right woman it ain't gonna be momentary baby it's gonna be momentous oh uh, God if I if I if I if I all right thank you Patrick if I move to the next level I just don't want it to be momentary I want it to be momentous the next time I move to the bank I don't want to just walk in the bank talk about this is just another moment I want it to be momentous 
momentous. Give me that deposit slip. I'm about to have a momentous deposit. Uh, uh, the next time God moves in my heart, uh, I don't want him to move just momentary. Uh, I want it to be a momentous move of God. Uh, that's why I'm sick and tired of experiences without meaning. Uh, I want a momentous experiences. Uh, if I got to pass the time, I might as well pass the time in a momentous relationship relationship I feel the Holy Ghost in here if you bless me let it be momentous I'm sick of just living getting old and ain't nothing happening I want something to happen in my life it ain't how old you are it ain't how long you lived but it's how momentous your life was and so the connection between the two meanings of finality are very close any event which completes a purpose may be regarded from the either point of view but the point of view becomes important when I bring history into the contemporary because now I've got to deal with the threats of the enemy in my own contemporary existence and I'm asking the question as I call the history of Jesus Christ into the contemporary of my life how relevant are you to the time in which I live and the answer comes from God he says when I speak of myself I'm not only speaking of myself in an historicity kind of a setting but I am the end of the very world it's me who processes the end of the world so so now I want you to see me in the light of the history of your life and see me in light of the future of your life when I came into the world 2,000 plus years ago I fixed your future you're looking at it now as history but your history has determined your future because when you met me I stopped your history but I opened your revelation because in Jesus is history and revelation not only do I have a past I've got a future not only do I have what I regret I've got what I'm promised and I don't live in what I regret I live in what I'm promised oh I feel this thing can I preach just a little bit more I got a little time when the completion of Christ's work is what the Hebrew calls rather the Greek calls tetelestai and that's when John said it is finished what he was talking about was not just the past but what he was talking about was the future everything I've ever done is done right now this is the end of the game when I rose from the dead and Satan couldn't keep me under when the grave couldn't hold my body down that was the move that sealed the whole game because when he arose with all power in his hand the game was over then I feel the Holy Ghost give somebody high five and said the game is already over this is otherwise expressed in the New Testament by a paradoxical affirmation that the eschaton has arrived and when you deal with eschaton you see there is no such passage that says to eschaton because to eschaton is the last thing 
and there is nothing in the Bible that's going to give us last things the loyalty to the Christocentric nature of the New Testament requires us to speak not of to eschaton but rather ho eschatos not the last thing but the last man I wish I could talk to you you ain't got to worry about the things when you got the last man can I talk to somebody here when I came to Jesus I didn't come just for things I came for him and when I'm moving with him I ain't got to worry about what level I'm on what level he's on is where I am I wish I could preach to somebody here I'm going to have some church. Give somebody a high five and tell them I'm going to have some church. You've got to understand what I'm saying. If you move with somebody, they don't have to write you no checks and pass you no money. You married the right man, honey. If he got a private jet, you ain't coming commercial. He going to have you sitting right beside him. If he got a Bentley, he ain't going to have you with a U-Haul attached to it. You're going to be sitting right beside him. You ain't got to worry about what he has if you got him the only time you worry about what he has is when he leaves him I wish I could talk to you now shake somebody's hand say I know that's right you ain't gonna worry how you look if you with the man if he looking good he ain't gonna have you looking like nine miles a bad road everybody around here looking for a sign I don't need a sign when I got the man I don't have to worry about the rock when I got the man I ain't worrying about earthquakes and shaking when I got the man I don't worry about whether the dollar's going down because when you got the man the dollar can be going down and you steady going up I feel like having uh, he is called the whole eschatos Adam he is called the eschatological man the first Adam brought mess in but I bring and send the mess out in Revelations 1 17 2 8 22 13 Christ is the essentially he is the whole protos chi whole eschatos he is the first and he is the last when I look at him in history he is the son of man on earth he is that eschatological figure of the apocalypse exercising the functions of forgiveness and judgment and doing it as the demons say have you come to torment us before our time shut up demon you ain't got no time I control the time and whenever I get ready to move time don't control me can I preach like I feel it so some folk think they got seniority in the church. The devil is a liar. Time don't mean nothing to God. I wish I had some help. Send me about five people I'll show you. Come on, give me five, five, five. Five of you beautiful. Y'all beautiful enough to come. Come on, get on camera. Fine as you are. Come on. You got to understand this. Time don't mean nothing to God. Time, you talk about you got seniority. I've been here first. I'm the one here first. But God's got a way of turning it around so that the first become the last. Because I control time. I bless who I want when I want. And you got to know when the game is over. Can I preach while I can? I was listening, I was reading Schweitzer the other day. And I don't agree with Schweitzer who has argued the difference between Paul and the early church to his own theological chagrin but Schweitzer still makes a valid point 
quote in a metaphor with an arresting force and I quote he said while other believers held the finger of the world clock they held that the finger of the world clock was touching on the beginning of the coming hour which should announce this Paul told them it had already passed beyond the point and that they had failed to hear the striking of the hour which struck at the resurrection of Jesus Christ you talking about last days when Jesus rose it was last days because there were certain things none of us even think about Jesus is the eschatological man eschatological man let me call it as one writer put it the gospel of realized eschatology but I'm gonna call it the gospel of inaugural eschatology because there are certain passages in the Bible that we don't even think when it comes to last days but who in here has got the Holy Ghost well I heard him say in the last days I would pour out my spirit upon all flesh even slaves and scullions even prostitutes and adulteresses even thieves and murderers even liars and fornicators even pushers and junkies will receive the Holy Ghost and that will be a sign that Jesus has already come I feel like preaching in here shake somebody's hand like you gonna shake it off and say the kingdom of heaven is already here I heard Moses when he said he said I wish that all God's people were prophets and the Lord would put his spirit upon them well I've got news for you that's a reality of today the new age of the kingdom has already begun and I'm not looking for a date on the calendar because I'm already wrapped up and tied up in Jesus I feel the Holy Ghost give somebody high five and said I don't have to wait till the battle is over because the game is already won I'm not just mocking time I'm already winning I feel like preaching in here can I preach like I feel it do I have a few more minutes then I feel like I'm gonna shout what else is there to happen I heard one writer say the idea of the second advent stands in the New Testament for the conviction that if the events of the incarnation have the eschatological logical character asserted of them then history must come to a close everything was open till Jesus came and when Jesus came he fixed it so that nothing else can happen that hasn't already happened because when the best came came nothing else follow it I feel like preaching that's why when you get used to a certain lifestyle you don't want to go back down again because I'm used to wearing Mugler I don't want to wear nothing else now I'm used to riding in Bentleys and I sure don't want to go down I feel something pushing me now well I heard the Lord say when I come and I come with all power that's in my hand I'll raise you up to a level where you're a joint heir with Christ I ain't trying to be like the president I'm a joint heir with Christ I ain't trying to run with Trump I'm a joint heir with Christ and when I get ready to drop names I don't drop no name but Jesus Jesus, I'm name dropping. He's the lily of the valley. 
the bright and morning star and I heard him when he said the last move I made when I came up from the grave it is finished give somebody a high five and say your joy it is finished your victory it is finished your power it is finished and all the Lord did was sit down and said it's over like giving God the praise give somebody a high five and set his own tell the devil leave me alone cause it's over the game is over all of your threats don't mean a thing I wish I was talking to somebody that's looking for a word from the Lord shake somebody's hand and say the Lord told me to tell you it's over what your boss is trying to do it ain't gonna work what your family's trying to do it ain't gonna work what the devil is trying to do it ain't gonna work cause Jesus made a move and said mate in six mate in five mate in twenty it don't matter you're wasting your time you don't deserve to be messing with me cause you're already defeated and all you do is make a noise but I'm already aware that weeping may endure for a night but joy is coming in the morning give somebody a high five and say keep on rejoicing keep on praising him keep on lifting him up keep on dancing keep on listening keep on walking cause your victory is already won the game is over Get up from the table and tell the devil my last move was to get in Jesus and I'm fixed for the rest of my life. And ah, fixed for the rest. I feel like shouting in here. I feel like preaching in here. I want to talk to somebody that's been in the storm. It's just a matter of time, but the game is over. It's just a matter of time, but they can't win because we got too much on the scoreboard. Give somebody a high five. Say they just playing it out, honey, but they can't win. Don't you see them holding the ball? Just letting the clock run out. Shake somebody's hand and say, neighbor, tell the devil, let the clock run out because you're already lost. You can't beat me. You can't win this. God has <laughs> Y'all excuse me today but I feel the Holy Ghost touch three people say you might as well shout you might as well dance you might as well praise him you might as well lift him up you might as well enjoy your walk cause of death Thank you.
escape. When I left the streets, you lost this game. When I walked away from the streets, you lost. Why are you messing with me? When the fullness of time The game is over Oh glory You should have kept me in the streets But when I left the streets the game was over Ain't nothing you can do with me now so you're bringing sickness, you're just fooling around. I don't need a sign. I'm closing. I don't need to worry about the bombs and who's coming over here and all of that nervousness because I know the man. I hang out with the man. You see, and I'm closing. If my wife, if, if my wife is out of town and you, you know she got a key to the house, she got enough money to come on in anytime she get ready. And if we got a good relationship going, well surely she ain't got to call me when she coming. Because she got a key. She can come anytime she get ready. Because that's her house and I'm her husband. Now, if I ain't doing nothing wrong, I don't have to know when she's coming. She ain't got to call me. No, well, baby, I'm on the way. Just want you to know I'm coming, so get prepared. Now, if I got a little thing going on on the side, up in her house with my crazy self, then I need to know when she coming. Now, let me know when you're coming now. I just want to be ready, that's all. I just, uh, why you need to know? I just want to be ready. See, in this eschatological last day time, everybody looking for a sign. And Christian folk act like they ain't ready. If you got a relationship with Jesus and it's a good relationship, you don't need a sign because you enjoying him anyway. You having a good time. You got heaven on earth. So you ain't looking for no sign. He can come at any time because time don't mean nothing. The devil's already defeated. He's just trying to play out his hand. Oh, I feel like shouting on that one. You ever, uh, you ever played pool with a good pool player and got the eight ball sitting over the hole and he walking away say, I don't need to shoot that. And you know he's good. Ain't no sense of you for it. Just start racking because the game Somebody ought to tell the devil, start racking up your next move because this last game you played on me is over! Oh! Oh! It's over! Woo! Got myself together. It's over.
God's calling somebody to salvation. If you're in this house, you don't need any signs of the time. Jesus has already fixed it for you. Just come. Say, I want to give my life to the Lord. I want to turn my life over to him who has already set me free. When he died on Calvary, you were future. You were the future he died for. Give somebody to give God the praise. Any, listen, don't let him walk and nobody go with him. Somebody just meet him. Reach out to my brother, my sister as they come. Come on and say, I want to give my life to the Lord. I want to be saved today. I want to be saved right now. Right now. Right now. I want to accomplish my purpose. I want to achieve my destiny. I know there's so much more for my life than what I'm living right now. And if somebody's sensitive to the needs of my brother, my sister, don't let her walk alone. Somebody meet her as she comes. Oh, bless you, Keith. Steve. Somebody. I empower everybody. Nobody can tell you don't touch them because I say, if you see somebody moving, move with them. Give God the praise. Somebody give him the praise. Give him the praise. Give him the praise. Give him the praise. See, when our hearts knit as one, we touch the lives of those who are around us. She's walking by herself. Oh, bless you, bless you. Bless you. Nobody. Don't let these young men walk by themselves. Oh, yes, that's it. That's it, that's it. But Jesus.